So here's the bottom line, and then I'm plunging into the news, and then your phone calls. I'll get the number out here in a moment. The special interests are so entitled, like social justice warriors, that on a massive scale, that they really think the presidency and the Congress and the country belongs to them. They really think they're big inventive geniuses to sell our jobs off to China and set up trade deals where we can't compete. And then, well, they've got to deal with the Chinese general they've had going for 30 years and ha ha ha, you know, make a billion dollars and then Buffy can go to the best schools and boy, aren't we Ivy League geniuses. No, you're called traitors. You're called pieces of trash. And let's be clear, it isn't like you sold out to some superior empire that was gonna come and make things better. You want to make things worse in your cosmology of eugenics uh, because that's how you manage us. The truth is, we're coming down fast, but we're miles above you. And your attempt to dominate the human spirit is your greatest crime, and you have failed. The cracks in your defense system are irrevocable. The gravity pull of liberty will now crush you. The question is, how long is it going to take until you surrender? Now, I want to be clear. I'm not pushing some utopia here. The global is pushing utopia, which is actually a dystopic nightmare if you really look at it and study their own plans. A utopia for them, they say, sounds like a nightmare, but a true dystopic system for us. So these special interests think you belong to them, and they've, they've, they've projected a spirit of sleep, a spirit of delusion, a, a spirit of pettiness. They've created the most empty, ugly culture they can, and it's declassified, they did it on purpose. Working with the big foundations, working with Hollywood, to kill the beauty in your soul. And you could say we've been in a desert period, very arid, very dry, very hot, not a lot of life, but here comes the rain. Here she comes again. I love the rain. I love the rain. And you watch the life come back to the desert and that bloom. There's nothing more beautiful than a desert spring. When the floods come and wash away the detritus. <sighs> there won't be a utopia on the other side of that, but it's damn close compared to the New World Order system. And we have a lot to repair. Humanity is damaged. In fact, we're far, far from completing this war. But I can tell you, the tide has turned. So make no mistake how bad things get in the future. What matters is this species on the other side is going to make it through it with God's help, with your prayers and your action. So I want to open the phones up for callers, specifically on the wide, huge thoroughfare of this election, the state of the world, I think they're going to pull some false flags. I think they're going to pull an assassination attempt on Hillary. I'm telling you, I just feel it. Um, just uh, wow. But, but I don't even have anxiety anymore because I felt it building the last few years. You all felt it now. There's not even more anxiety because we're in the battle. It's like, it's on. We're here. And it's a spirit. Spirit of liberty versus a spirit of oppression, spirit of tyranny. And... A lot of people think they're Christians, but they can't really be in the presence of real freedom to be in the presence of real liberty, to be in the presence of God because it's too big, it's, it's too deep, it's, it's too wide, it's too complex, it's too frightening to them because I guess their timid souls just can't handle the truth. They're not designed, some of these people, to drink from these waters. And so they'll never know. And I, I personally sit there and try to understand the like mystery of Calvinistic thinking, and I don't particularly think that that thought of Calvinism is, is complete or, or absolutely correct, whereas you're predestined but also have free will. But these people have a will to hurt innocence and a will to try to make people poor and a will to try to pull things down. They're demonic. And, and again, I have hundreds of stories, incredible news, but I, ju I just get back to the bedrock foundation here that the globalists really are horrible, evil, wicked, despicable, jealous, envious creatures that really do just want to overthrow creation. I mean, look at how they attack the sacred union 
of man and woman. That deepest, oldest of bonds that took us and our ancestors through all of the incredible tribulations this species has faced. The bonds that were forged, the, the oaths that were sworn. And we see the globalists destroying our families, destroying our children, attacking such a noble species as ours, trying to make us ennoble so that these creatures can feel better about themselves. Because when they look at us, when these psychopaths look at us, they feel low because they are low. All right, let me get to some of these news stories. There's a lot of them here. But I, I mean, I tell you, I look at Hillary Clinton. And I look at an arrogant, power-tripping servant of darkness, chosen by spiders far more wicked than her, to command the forces of evil. Don't you think the globals would want to find someone better spoken, better looking, more honorable to lead their system? But they can't find people who are honorable to do it. They will not do it. They cannot do it. And so we have crones like Madeleine Albright visited upon us. Zero honor in her body. Saved from the Nazis by the Serbs. Lived there until she was a teenager. And then ran to the United States like George Soros with stolen Jewish loot. Loot that she, her father stole from Jews. Think about this. Think of these people. We have Madeleine Albright, who is just, just like George Soros. She has been caught with $10 million paintings in her house stolen from Jews that were killed. She's a Jew. She gets on TV and says 500,000 dead Iraqis are a good price to pay, really being herself, Iraqi children. Can we cue that up? I think you reminded me of it because you put it up on screen. I mean, just imagine. You like broker all these Jews trying to get out for the Nazis, double-cross them, kill them, get their, get their family jewels. Their real family jewels are sent off to be killed. You get all the loot, and then you run to Serbia, and they save you, and then you come and run bombing campaigns against them to bring Muslims in. It's like, oh, here, let me save you, man. Oh, thank you. Ah. I mean, it's, it's like, but, and you say, this doesn't make sense. Why attack the people that save you? That's because it's evil. It's like even sicker and more fun to screw over the people that saved you. See how that works? And so you start getting into their mindset. And you go, oh, my God, these people are literal spawn of hell. Hillary Clinton, born into this country uh, with this incredible rich past and, and all of our swashbuckling and everything and our inventions. And I mean, the whole world, from the Japanese to the Russians to the French to people in African countries, you know, come and see America and say, these people are incredible. They don't put up with crap. Uh, you know, people stand up. People are involved. People kill each other in the streets. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We're real. And then she gets all this power being brought up in this system, and then she hates it. She hates the very environment that, that, that gave her all this power. It's like the devil created the most beautiful, powerful, second, you know, uh, you know, second only to God. But then Lucifer looks at God and says, but you're everything. You're, I could never even be you, so I want to go make my own thing. I want to go, but you can't even make anything, Lucifer. So you have to go hijack something else God made. And God sits back and says, okay, you go ahead and try to uh, break my creation that's made in my image. And that's why Lucifer doesn't like us, folks, because we're made, and you can see it all, what we build, what we do, in the image of the entity that created us everything. And we're just larvae right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're being tested. We're being prepared. We're in boot camp right now. These people think they're winners. They went and sold out to the beast system. They sold out to the New World Order. They think they're getting ahead because they're part of that. You just failed. Big, fat F minus. A big, fat zero. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's amazing. The eyes not seen, the ears not heard, what God's got in store for us. Can you imagine the other side, the next level? This level's pretty amazing right here, I gotta tell you, but I just love God. And no matter what happens to me, I know it's all part of God's plan. And I have total faith in God, total faith. And you know, when I was like two or three years old, I would get so sad thinking about starving children around the world. And 
I wasn't even watching shows about that. I could just feel the suffering when I was a little child, and I just prayed to God that someday, somehow, we could try to take more suffering out of the world. And I thought growing up, everybody was like me. I thought everybody wanted to help others. Let's see, when people have been infected by this globalist system, they're not even conscious anymore. They're like running a satanic program in their brain. And all they want to do is hurt people. We have Albright clip. Here is Madeleine Albright talking about 500,000 children dying with sanctions. There's a good price to pay. Here it is. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Now, you have to understand, and then she goes on from there, her stability quote in the Gulf. That was back when even the corrupt, twisted media was still a little bit more honest because they, you know, at least pretended they weren't deceptive to themselves. Nowadays, they just wouldn't even show that clip. And the media thinks it's like winning because it goes along with this when it's destroying itself. I have another clip. This is um, Congressman Chaffetz, who I like more and more, um, with the FBI yesterday. We already played a clip of this yesterday, but I wanted to play this particular clip where he says to the FBI uh, agent that's in there testifying and won't give Congress the field reports, the 302s. And the longer clip explains, listen, we, we make the laws. This is Congress. So we're not doing a FOIA request for the Judicial Committee, sir. You're going to give it. In fact, here's your subpoena right now. And this is so good. This is Congress waking back up. Now, if you think it's bad to have the FBI under the orders of uh, Loretta Lynch and others, well, that's who's running the FBI right now. If you think, if you think that's bad, what about Obama saying he used the authority to attack countries from NATO, not Congress? And the congressman go, I don't think I'm even hearing this one I'm hearing right now. Are you joking? And you see, that's why England, who's been a big warmongering group and done a lot of bad things, finally did the right thing a few years ago and said, we're not attacking Syria. They finally, and, and that's what they say, you know, is, is the big joke at the end of the day, is that even though England's brutal and has a lot of serious problems, a little bit soft heart at the end, which is good. You have a soft heart for a reason. You don't turn into Hillary Clinton. You have a big rock for a heart and project onto me that I have a dark heart. But they said, really, they're going to exterminate and de-Christianize Syria? That's what this thing is. This is Saudi Arabia. It's already tried it three different times. Is killing every Christian they can. Obama won't let them out of the country. It's 0 0.4, 0.4% 0 Christians they let out when the population was 20%. They're not letting Christians out. It's a death trap. And then Obama gave a speech a, few, a year ago or so that told me everything I needed to know. I thought we got to find the clip plate again. Right? He relishes, he goes, listen, I, mean, I can't do a good Obama impression, but listen, you know, we just can't only let Christians in. We got to be fair and let, you know, Muslims in, you know, from this region who've been hurt. They don't let Shiites in. Less than 1%, even though Shiites are 20%, or, or more in Syria. They're 20% worldwide. I think it's like 30-something percent in Syria. They don't let but maybe 1% of them in, and it's 0 0.4. Look it up, Christians. They don't let them out. They're killing them. And, of course, the MI6 went in there, and they actually briefed them. They said, this is the U.S. plan. This is what's going on. We're, gonna, we're conducting a genocide, just like the Armenian genocide that the Turks conducted. And the House of Commons said, we're not going to be part of that. See, it's gotten so evil now that they march in and say, the operation to de-Christianize Syria is ongoing, Commander. We only need the funding for the next flotilla, and the attack fleets are ready. And they're like, we're killing all the Christians? Yes, as part of the organized program launched by Lord Soros. I mean, this is what's going on behind the scenes. And they're like, uh, well, certainly you agree to the plan. We've launched it against Russia as well. Our programs are going well in the schools here. The nation is almost 100% anti-Christian now. And they're sitting back at their chairs going, they're kind of, whoa, we actually are doing it. We're... We're falling. We're killing our countries. We're, we're killing the, the engine of our strength. Why, why? Why? Because a hunchback George Soros wants to. That's why. Yeah, only 56 of the 10,000 Syrian refugees led into the U.S. are Christian. Do the math. It's 0.4% last time I did it. Might have changed. Out of 10,801, 56 are Christian. That's half of 1%.
So now they say 0 0.5. I, I guess after the human cry, I'm going to skip this break. Oh, it's not good to skip that music. Um, this is the epic moment we have reached. People say to me, they either say, oh, you're a horrible opportunist, you're this evil person, oh, lying about the loving government, the media, or they say, oh, you have so much courage, you're so wonderful. We have a pack of vampires trying to take over, and I, I'm, I've got courage that I'm fighting them? If a big mean guy busted through that door and was attacking people, I couldn't keep myself from going over and fighting them. And it's not because I've got courage. It's not because I'm a tough guy. It's default. And maybe there's something wrong with me then, because I, I just can't imagine running. But for a public that's never, I guess, gone through any rites of passage, I could see how people think running is the way to get away from things, but it's not. Because if somebody was coming to get me, they're going to keep coming. I need to face them down. Now, maybe if it's not the best time or I could think things out, I'd slip away, but confronted with it head on, it's, it's, it's a switch gets flipped and we need to flip that switch right now. And because sometimes I'll have family come to town or whatever, they'll go, man, that's getting pretty rough on you. Huh? I saw the front page of the paper the last three days attacking you. And yeah, and I saw on TV there, how, how, how are you holding up under it? I'm like freaking popping champagne bottles when we get down to brass tacks. I mean, figuratively, I haven't had any champagne in a while. I don't really like champagne, but to have traitors attacking you and me and Trump and everybody else, Man, that is, that is a great honor. So the toll-free number to join us on false flags, what is Hillary going to pull? You agree the facade is collapsing. What do you think about the next 53 days till this epic election? Super epic, epic, I mean, gorgantuan, historical, unprecedented. This will be a day long remembered. I mean, I don't know how you highlight this as, as, as the big one. Most important election, I think, in U.S. history. Everything on the table. The globalists admitting they're all in. World government in peril. They're hitting the panic alert buttons. And notice as we get more bold, good men and women in government can be more bold now. People always say, oh, and I want to say something fundamental. I'm not kissing the butt of the government. I'm a constitutionalist. I want a very small constitutional government. I'm supporting and praising good people in government that are sending good signals, doing good things, putting their neck out there. That means those individuals. And quite frankly, we can get mad at TSA agents all day, and boy, have I. But as I mature, I more and more, I just go, you know, it is the bad folks in Congress, and it is the people that set these policies up and left our borders wide open. That's where this started. So why should I just sit here and attack the actual TSA people? Because that's just a cop-out. It's easy to attack the little TSA person. I need to attack myself for letting this happen. I need to actually go after people that did it. And so, quite frankly, I didn't turned to the side of the police. I was never against the police. I was angry at seeing unconstitutional stuff happening and knowing the corruption the police was happening by the globalists and the ADL, the Southern Poverty Law Center, brainwashing them with anti-American, Soviet-level, anti-free speech garbage. And now the police, even the FBI, doesn't get their info from the Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL now. Most police departments will begrudgingly take the award politically, but, the, but it's a laughing stock, and no one believes it. So... The police, on average, did the right thing. They're, they're for the republic, so that's good. And, of course, George Soros wants his people to go shoot him in the back of the head. You know, that's what's going on here, folks, a war for the country. We can reform the police later, but you're not going to reform them running around saying shoot them in the back of the head. You're going to turn them into a paramilitary force that the globalists think they can then capture and use against the patriots. No, 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 no. If George Soros wants you to hate the police, you shouldn't hate them. Try going up and talking to them, being nice to them, finding out what's going on. That's how we have humanity. That's how we change this. That's how we turn this around. That's how we defeat the New World Order. My greatest work is with, with you that have magnified our information and, and helped us with the information is that we really have painted a very clear picture of what's going on. And, 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 as, and as things get revealed, people go, wow, it really is a clear picture. Alex really knew. Well, of course, I do this 15 hours a day. I interview all the top experts. I live this. And for whatever reason, genetically, in my whole family line on both sides, this is what arises every time there's a political need. I mean, it might go generations before there's a big crisis, but every time there is, my ancestors right back to the start have, have done things, some of them bigger than what I've done. And, and, and 
you have that as well, but you have to activate the genetics you have to understand you already have the battle plans. You already know how to counter the enemy. You already have everything you need. Your ancestors already overcame things, in many cases, much worse than we faced. All right, I'm going to play this uh, Chaffetz clip because it's, it's very important, and it's, it's, it's government, the real government, the Congress, that holds the purse strings. It's not supposed to be co-equal. Now they say the presidency is all-powerful, the UN. See, they're devolving the power in the wrong direction. It's Congress. Congress. At first, it's the states. Got about 51% of the power. Then of the 49%, I'd say a good 20% of that is supposed to be really be going to Congress. That's what the founders said. It's how it works. And then it's the courts and then the president. The president executes. He's an executive. He executes what the board tells him to do. The president, presidents don't run companies. That's ass backwards. The shareholders. We're the shareholders. We're the stakeholders. We're the Americans. We hold it. We, we do, we do. We're about to get a CEO, a president that wants to do that, get ready to kick ass. He knows he's got the team that's still unstoppable, that they've tried to teach it's a wimp and, 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 and sit there and hunch over like it's a nobody. Truth is, 1776 is about to go supernova. Let's go to this clip. Sound this is the House Governmental Oversight Committee, chaired by Congressman Jason Chaffetz, is furious that the FBI has released selected portions of its file about Mrs. Clinton. Mm -hmm. At the same time the FBI was being interrogated by Congressman Chaffetz, his opposite member in the Senate, Senator Grassley, the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, was making a speech about the same thing. Okay, the so both bodies is, are upset. Quickly, go ahead. How did the FBI decide what to keep secret and what to release, and how can they do that Congress, to the Congress? Our Will the FBI provide to Congress the full file with no redactions of personal identifiable information? I cannot make that commitment sitting here today. Then I'm going to issue a subpoena, and I'm going to do it right now. So let's go. I've signed this subpoena. We want all the 302s, and we would like the full file. You can accept service on behalf of the FBI? Certainly. You are hereby served. You know what I like about Chaffetz? His hand is shaking there. And that's okay, because the FBI is dangerous. I mean, let's, <laughs> the FBI basically runs a show in this country, and they're run by criminals now. And he's standing up against these criminals. He's got big huevos. In the last 20 years, InfoWars has paid its dues. We have proven that we are a cutting edge news and information source. And when it comes to funding our operations, we take cutting edge to the next level with the highest quality supplements and nutraceuticals available. We have now more than 25 different amazing formulas available at InfoWarsStore.com. And the flagship is Super Male and Super Female Vitality, where we take thousands of years of the ancient knowledge and use high-tech modern technology to cold press these organic herbs to give you compounds that are meant to accentuate the body's normal function. We're making it easier than ever today with a special we're running for two weeks only, 20% off on these formulas at InfoWarsLife.com. Everyone out there watching and listening to me owes it to themselves to give Mother Nature a try and try Super Male or Super Female Vitality. <laughs> So here's the bottom line, and then I'm plunging into the news, and then your phone calls. I'll give the number out here in a moment. The special interests are so entitled, like social justice warriors, but on a massive scale, that they really think the presidency and the Congress and the country belongs to them. They really think they're big, inventive geniuses to sell our jobs off to China and set up trade deals where we can't compete. And then, well, they've got to deal with the Chinese general they've had going for 30 years, and ha, 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 you know, make a billion dollars, and then Buffy can go to the best schools, and... Boy, aren't we Ivy League geniuses. No, you're called traitors. You're called pieces of trash. And let's be clear, it isn't like you sold out to some superior empire that was going to come and make things better. You want to make things worse in your cosmology of eugenics uh, because that's how you manage us. The truth is, we're coming down fast, but we're miles above you. And... Your attempt to dominate the human spirit is your greatest crime, and you have failed. The cracks in your defense system are irrevocable. The gravity pull of liberty will now crush you. The question is, how long is it going to take until you surrender? Now, I want to be clear. I'm not pushing some utopia here. The global is pushing utopia, which is actually a dystopic nightmare if you really look at it and study their own plans. A utopia for them, they say, sounds like a nightmare, but a true 
dystopic system for us. So these special interests think you belong to them, and they've, they've, they've projected a spirit of sleep, a spirit of delusion, a, a spirit of pettiness. They've created the most empty, ugly culture they can, and it's declassified, they did it on purpose. Working with the big foundations, working with Hollywood, to kill the beauty in your soul. And you could say we've been in a desert period, very arid, very dry, very hot, not a lot of life, but here comes the rain. Here she comes again. I love the rain. I love the rain. And you watch the life come back to the desert and that bloom, there's nothing more beautiful than a desert spring. When the floods come and wash away the detritus, there won't be a utopia on the other side of that, but it's damn close compared to the New World Order system. And we have a lot to repair. Humanity is damaged. In fact, we're far, far from completing this war. But I can tell you, the tide has turned. So make no mistake how bad things get in the future. What matters is this species on the other side is going to make it through it with God's help, with your prayers and your action. So I want to open the phones up for callers, specifically on the wide, huge thoroughfare of this election, the state of the world. I think they're going to pull some false flags. I think they're going to pull an assassination attempt on Hillary. I'm telling you, I just feel it. Um, just, uh, wow. But, but I don't even have anxiety anymore because I felt it building the last few years. You all felt it now. There's 